What is going on guys? My name is Hussein and timeouts are a very critical concept on the back end that is often overlooked and can lead to disasters when configured incorrectly. Examples are the outages that we've seen in the past in 2020 and the early 2021, such as Slack outage, the Amazon Kinesis outage, are exacerbated, that's a new word I learned, by the lack of configurable timeout that exists in the back end. And as a result, you are spending precious, beautiful CPU and RAM resources on request that are essentially dead and useless. And you want to kill those as quick as possible and move to a newly fresh, beautiful request. So in this video, what I want to do is I'm going to go through timeouts within the context of load balancers or reverse proxies and proxies in general in the back end and how our different points of views or where you can essentially switch and switch on timers and i'm gonna give some example of different popular proxies and how do they do configure timeouts such as nginx and and ha proxy that's a that's the two main things that i use on almost daily basis that's why i'm getting examples on those how about we jump into it so guys what i'm gonna do here is i'm gonna start mentioning proxies and when i say proxy I essentially mean it could be replaced with a reverse proxy, replaced with a load balancer or layer four load balancer or layer seven load balancer. Although these kind of the timeouts in these situations a little bit differ, but I'm going to speak in general. So let's take an example here. When we talk about a proxy or a load balancer, we have client makes the request to the reverse proxy and then the reverse proxy on its behalf picks a backend and sends that request to the backend. So let's see, let's take an example of exactly what happens. So the client connects to the reverse proxy, and that is establishing a three way handshake, TCP handshake, right? So now you have a connected client directly to your beautiful proxy right here. And the job of the proxy is to determine whether a client is worth keeping around versus killing it to free up that beautiful resources that we just allocated for you, climb, to send it to somewhere more worthy, okay? So now I have a client. So the first time that comes to mind when, it, when there is a proxy and a client is inactivity, right, that for that client. And you might say, Hussein, what do you mean by inactivity? Because it's a very vague time it's a ve very overloaded term here because you can think of an inactivity is like hey the client didn't send anything for a long period of time so i declare that this client is inactive and i'm gonna start terminating that connection and that's another topic by itself just the lingering shutdown and how do you shut down a client, right? That's the topic by itself. You can take a video, a whole video talking about that. So now that's the first thing, right? So the client is just not sending anything. Well, well you're, you, you didn't send anything for three minutes. Tough luck. Bye. Okay, so that's one aspect of it, which is, which is very easy to understand. And Nginx supports that. HA proxy supports that as well, the inactivity aspect of it. However, there is a flip of the equation here as well. The client is not actively sending something, but I, as a proxy, I'm responding back to the client with a response. I'm writing something to the client, right? The client sent me a request and I'm trying to respond to this request. So regardless of how I came up with this response, I hit some back and right? We we're going to talk, talk about that in a minute. When you send a response, what does that mean, right? A response is a huge payload right could be a huge payload but when you break it down to multiple tcp packets right or segments that's a correct way to saying it each packet you write it to the socket right and then the client is responsible to acknowledge these rights okay with an acknowledgement that's how tcp works there is another timeout that you can configure right here so hey how long if i wrote something you have to acknowledge it right away, client. If you don't, that means you're dead, son. So what do we do in this situation? Some 
proxies actually configure such timeouts on this case. It's like, hey, you can you can set this an activity time for that acknowledgement. How long how long should I wait? Hey, looks like you're inactive. I just sent you something and you didn't reply back. So that's another timeout that you can configure. And Nginx does a good job at allowing you to configure that knob, right? While HI proxy doesn't have that. HI proxy says, hey, you have one timeout if it's an activity. And that's that's I in that particular situation, I prefer Nginx over HA proxy because it gives you this fine control. Right? Because you can have an, an activity time, hey, the client is just not sending anything, is different from I am sending as a proxy sending something to the client and I need a response. You need the send timeout to be smaller while the an activity timeout to be larger, right? Is these are not the same. Right, a chat proxy, as far as I know, don't get, allow you to do that. You just you ju you, don't, you only have the client timeout, and that's it. it says hey, uh, how long the inactivity? Both you can set it, you set it as one thing. If you set it as three minutes, that's it. That three minutes apply to the client when it doesn't send anything. Versus if you actually send something from the proxy or the load balancer back to the client, and the client doesn't actually respond. That it, like which which is nuts, right? It's like you have to wait three minutes for the client to actually acknowledge something. Remember this. So that's uh, we're still talking about the client and the reverse proxy right here, right? So there is another use case why I prefer HA proxy over Nginx in this case. Let's take an example. I, as a client, might be active. I'm sending you packets, right? I'm sending you a request, but look, look how I'm sending it to you. Right, I have a request. Let's say I'm uploading a file. It's it's a large request, so it, it has headers. Let's say HTTP and has headers. It has a big body. It's a post request, right? So when I break it down as a client, I'm here and I break it down to multiple TCP segments. I'm gonna take my sweet ass time to send you this request. I'm gonna send you one packet and just wait and just wait and just wait and just wait. And obviously that the client timeout and activities is ticking, 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 right? But the moment I'm gonna say like wait for a few, maybe 30 seconds or 60 seconds and then send you another packet, right? And then that timeout just gets reset because hey, I'm active, I'm active, babe. I'm active. I'm sending you stuff, right? But technically, I'm still waiting on you to send me that whole request, which you could have sent, but you just decided to linger. And that attack, this is a specific attack, it's called slow loris. Very, very popular. Where you just consume a single stinking client consumes a lot of resources on your precious proxy or load balancer by just delaying those requests. So those timeouts will never get triggered because, hey, I'm active. You can't say I'm not active. I am active. I'm sending you this packet every 30 seconds, but I'm just taking my sweet ass time. <laughs> right? So that is why HA proxy have a special timeout called HTTP request, a timeout that since you begin uh, sending me a request, a logical request, and that you can get into a debate what it is a request really means, right? I talked about it a little, little bit here. But a request is a collection. A request at the application layer 7 layer, OSI, is just one unit. And you do an, a fetch command, or a XR in JavaScript, and then you send that beautiful request. But when you go to the network layer, it's different. It is a different beast. It could be one TCP segment, highly unlikely, but it could be 500 TCP segments, right? So now, when you start breaking down these, if you send me all the 500 TCP segments, then that it will be assembled as a logical request on the backend. So that time <laughs> take you to send me all of that stuff, that's called the HTTP request time. It's like, how long? How long? Has you, how long? Should I wait for you to send me the whole beautiful request? So at another timer, HA proxy has it, as long as, as far as I know, Nginx does not have that. Now you can configure, hey, if, if a client's taking its sweet ass time to send a request, a request should be sent in, I don't know, 25 seconds, right? That's it, maximum. If it's taking more than that, kill it. 
obviously now as a backend engineer it's your responsibility to see the nature of these requests are you uploading a file maybe it's a large file maybe it will take more than 25 seconds so now this is where it's very very critical to kind of define this and not just leave them as unlimited right because some people will abuse these requests right it's very very critical so that's that's what I'm gonna talk about. Another time that both proxies have is HTTP keep alive. How long should I keep this connection alive? And it has a little bit different semantics between HI proxy and Nginx, but in general, it's like, okay, between each request and another request, how long should I wait? Yeah, you might be sending me, you might be acknowledging my stuff in between, but how long have you not sent an actual request a logical request between these two and and that is when a keep alive is very important right because tcp itself has a keep alive concept where it says okay hey i'm alive i'm alive i'm alive this is very important for middle boxes right to do, do not shut this connection but logical beautiful request has a completely different you can set that and that's how you measure a good proxy by having these fine level tunes and as long as as they have a use case obviously right everything has a has a solar specific problem i talked about that in a little bit in my story so now we talked about in the front end aspect of the client to the proxy let's talk about the back end aspect so now i'm in the back end i just received i don't know i just received a request from the client as a proxy, my job as a reverse proxy is not, not really answering that stuff, right? I'm a, I'm a reverse proxy. I got to call somebody on the back end to answer this stuff for me. So there's a fleet of back end servers that I can call in order to satisfy this request. So the client is now the proxy itself. It turns around and sends that request back to the servers. Now you might say, Jose, how does it know which server? Well, that's, that's a whole beast by itself. The load balancing algorithm, right? It's like, how, how do I know? Is it this one? Is it this one? Is it this one? And guess what? You need to preheat these backend connections. You, that means you have to establish a connection to the backend to begin with. And now, HA proxy or Nginx or traffic or caddy becomes the client. So it establishes the TCP handshake to the backend. All right. Now the equation flips. Well, there's a timeout for you. What if the server doesn't respond? I'm trying to connect to it, but it doesn't respond to my sense and act, act request to establish a connection to begin with. I didn't send anything. I'm just trying to connect to the server. So that's one timeout that you can configure. How long should I wait? Is, is one second enough? That's probably that's probably more than enough because if the proxy NIC, right, the network interface controller and the back end are in the same beautiful LAN, then that should be instantaneous. But if it's in a different subnet or even a different data center, bad idea, by the way, that might take longer to connect right i don't know there's latency there's routers there's middle boxes i have to go through but that takes time right so that's a back end so now you can configure and play with these timelines a little bit say so again how long should i wait one second two seconds three seconds if if it takes more than three seconds to connect to the stinking server just kill it and there are many many reasons why you can't connect to a server it could be it could be just it's the latency so it could be just uh, it's it dead it's literally died or it could be overwhelmed there are many many building a proxy is not easy that's why i always say uh, i always be suspicious of if it's a solve if a server acts like a web server and a proxy at the same time it becomes really suspicious like wow you really can do both this stuff and now once you actually connect to a back end now we have a beautiful connection now there is another timeout that you can play with here let's say you sent a request from the client all the way to the proxy and the proxy now needs to send that same exact request to the back end 
Now it compiles that request and every proxy does it differently, right? Now it takes that, recompiles it, and then it might need to change a few things, might need to check whether you are allowed to make this request or not as a client. Maybe you're requesting slash admin, but you're a stinking just a you normal know, user. It does authentication, all that stuff. Obviously, I'm talking about layer seven proxy in this case because it's just terminated, decrypted, all that stuff to look at this to make these decisions. And then on the back end, turns it on and makes that request to the server. And now, how long should I wait for the for the server to respond? That's a beautiful, that's the most important time out in my opinion. It's like, how long should I wait for, this is the actual processing time. Here, there are no processing. The proxy is just a pass-through. The reverse proxy is a pass-through. I'm just waiting. But now, I'm actually sending a request to the actual backend that is about to process this. The server, the backend server could be processing a database query, could be doing uh, authentication, could be doing all sorts of uh, nasty things, right? So it's going to take time. And that's where you, as a backend engineer, you are responsible to kind of do a telemetry and say, okay, this kind of request, how long should it usually take? One second, 300 millisecond, 200 millisecond. You, that's why you have to just taste different requests and take a, an average and say, okay, the maximum time in a, in, in a million requests, this took, I don't know, 300 milliseconds. So it shouldn't be more than, I don't know, you, you give a little buffer. Okay, 400 millisecond. If it's more than that, just, just literally kill that, that connection report back to the client that that request on the back end has not been satisfied there is like a, a slew a lot of request timeouts here right the http codes that you can throw in and it's just very very interesting here's another thing that so both both the nginx and ha proxy have these capabilities right and then, then you can you can wait for a specific amount of time but nginx in this case gives you even a fine-tuned features like you can you can wait for the headers right give a different timeouts for the headers to be received versus a different completely different timeout for the body they differentiate it your proxy didn't do that and maybe there is a good reason for it, right? Say, so, okay, we want to keep it simple. And a lot of people prefer the simplicity over these hundred types of timeouts, right? I didn't see a reason why you need different, in my opinion, I didn't see a reason why we need a timeout for the headers versus a timeout for the body. To me, you're just complicating your software. Maybe there was a use case, but obviously Nginx documentation is one of the worst. They don't tell you what they're doing. There's one sentence that explains everything compared to HA proxy, which I prefer, obviously. Obviously, not, none of this stuff is sponsored. This is all my personal opinion. HA proxy, when you look at the doc, they give you every single use case. Hey, we created this timeout because of this use case. We created this timeout because of this use case. We did this because of this. There's no timeout that is just exists for the sake of existence, right? They don't just add stuff for the sake of fun or just making it feature full. And that's just a, a whole debate. Really, we can go for hours talking about that stuff for a long time, talking about which one is better. Uh, it's like, is, uh, does, does more features really mean better? I completely disagree, obviously, with that statement, right? You can add features that solve the problem to your target audience. Like, who, are, who are you targeting? If you're building a proxy, well, you're targeting certain backend engineers, right? Like or edge engineers maybe, right? And then that's that's one use case. It builds us to be building a web server and then making it also a proxy. You're also targeting people, engineers who want to who want to do everything in one, right? Which is like a very, very simple thing. I'm not saying anything wrong with that, but I'm I'm emphasizing the point that you're overloading your software. And as a result, bugs, you will get double amount of the bugs compared to the things that you just use. Obviously, if you need just a web server, you need a software that is just a web server and a proxy that is just doing a proxy. A lot of people disagree with me on this. This is a very unpopular opinion. I get a lot of a lot of uh, nasty tweets on me when, it got, when I talk about this topic, but that's my opinion. You can have yours, obviously. I just prefer simplicity, right? 
if I need a proxy, I just pick a server that does a proxy. If I need a w actually full fledged web server, because we're building a web server is not easy. That has its own challenge with encryption and TLS and all that stuff, right? So that's its own challenges. So you want to add more work to you by adding a proxy, you're going to half ass that thing. <laughs> if you're going to be a proxy, you can't just be a proxy and a web server. You're going to, unless you have F5 money that has Nginx, that's a different, obviously, different discussion. All right, guys, that's it for me today. What do you think of timeouts? Have you configured timeout? How do, you, do you have any interesting stories when it comes to timeouts? Leave it in the comment section below. I'm going to see you on the next one. You guys stay awesome. Goodbye, yo.